People who have been on TV game shows, what are some of the behind the scenes secrets that regular viewers don't know about? Was in the audience at a Food Network taping and Iron Chef America really is a 60 minute competition. That's not fudged. The judging on the other hand takes forever. My teacher was on Wheel of Fortune Australia and he won a life supply of WD-40. It turns out with average usage a can of WD-40 lasts 20 years. So a life supply is 4 cans. You win a lifetime supply of hammers. Here's one hammer. A work colleague of mine was one of the couples in Married at First Sight. He had a horrible experience. Needed counseling afterwards and is still receiving an appearance fee, read hush money, even though her season aired like 5 years ago. Her words. They let the other girl in the showcase showdown, price is right, rabbit after the audience boot her original bid, something silly low like $10. 000. When it aired. They cut her original bid and showed only her second. Winning bid. I lost. Was on a MTV game show called Fist of Zen on MTV. Basically a group of people subjected to painful and nauseating tasks for cash. We won every round but the producer asked us to purposefully fail one to change things up. Despite losing one round we were still paid the full prize money. I was on Wheel of Fortune. You have to get there at 5am where you draw straws with other contestants to decide when you will film. They film the entire week of episodes in one day. At Sajak is incredibly friendly and interacted with us on every break. I was on Cash Cab. You can't just hail a cab in New York which turns out to be the cash cab. There is a vetting process. But you don't know you are going to be on the show so the reaction is genuine. Also. There is a lot of awkward silence time while he is listening to the producer in his ear. There is a cameraman riding shotgun unseen on TV. The money he gives is prop money for TV. They mail you a check after the show airs. Ben Bailey was genuinely a nice guy. I was in the audience at the Price is Right. You wait like 4 plus hours just to get into the taping. They come by and give you a short interview to see if you are a good prospect to make it to contestant row. I was with a group of 4 and none of us made it. The studio audience is significantly smaller than it appears on TV. Drew Carey told jokes between filming. The set is tiny. The wheel is tiny. No secrets to reveal except that they must use some serious lenses and angles to make it appear bigger. It was a long day but it was a cool experience. My wife got a tattoo on a tattoo competition show. They gave her headphones to wear while she was being tattooed. But she wasn't allowed to actually plug them in and listen to music. Pure product placement lol. Other than that it was a really good experience. Producers worked with her for several weeks leading up to and made sure she got a tattoo subject and style that she wanted. I was on Wheel of Fortune. 1. The wheel weighs a ton. Some people might watch and think that it's easy to target a particular dollar wedge. But to spin that thing well. You practically have to throw your arm out. 2. Pat Sajak is really quick witted. In the taping before us, they film 5-6 episodes at once. A woman won the prize puzzle and started to cry like crazy as they cut to commercial. Sajak yelled to the director, or someone in the production crew, to throw him a box of tissues. So that when cameras came back up, he could be dabbing her tears as a joke. It was very light-hearted and added to the game show atmosphere. For sure. 3. The bonus round wheel does not weigh a ton. I was the knight's champion, but sadly did not get the bonus puzzle for an extra $45,000. The smaller wheel looks a lot like the main one. And they don't give you a practice spin. So I just wound up and threw that sucker and I thought it was going to fly into outer space. They tell the audience to clap and cheer and they film that to edit it and during appropriate events. If we didn't cheer or clap loud enough. They had us retake it. The same goes for Grimace's negative reactions and shock surprise. I was on Who Wants To Be A Millionaire. And it's all scripted. The filming took half a day for 30 minutes of film. When you win the intro round. You are taken out to get your makeup on. 
and then they instruct you how to act when you celebrate. The reason the audience is so completely useless, and why you see so many press wrong on obvious answers, is because 20-30% of the audience is friends and family to the other 7 contestants who are waiting for their turn. We spent 2 days in the studio. And if the initial contestant loses, the others get their chance. If one contestant goes far and takes a lot of time, no one else gets a chance. So the audience tells the wrong answer on purpose. Producers keep an eagle eye on contestants throughout the day. Even escorting you to the bathroom. This is because of the quiz show scandals of the 1950s. And because the whole week tapes in a day. You have to bring 4 changes of clothes with you. All in solid colors so the patterns don't bleed on camera. This was the 80s. It hasn't. Patterned clothing. Especially checks and small stripes. Still causes moiré effects on screen. Source. Had a teacher in middle school who won full carpeting for a house on the prices right when he was in grad school. He did not own a home in grad school. He also said you could see which games were coming up in line off on the side. And literally everyone was trying to hold out winning the first game for Plinko lol. Edit. When I was a kid I went to family game show with my uncle. The theme of the show was animal life. So it featured interviews. Musical performances etc. In between the questions we had to answer. None of that was shot in the order you see on TV. We shot questions and answers all in one go. Everything else had already been shot before and they used sound effects to make you think it was sequential. I auditioned for X Factor. You don't go to the celebrity judges first you go in front of some off camera judges. So every terrible and horrible singer you see on the show has already been told they are better than the many talented ones not deemed TV worthy which makes it a lot more disgusting to me. In deal or no deal only the interesting people get picked. If you are outgoing and excited you've got a high chance of being selected. Also. If you appear to be their target contestant. But turn out to be a dud. Then I think they have the option of not putting you on air and no prize for you. Whether that is a threat they follow though with or not I'm not sure. Comma they have the option of not putting you on air and no prize for you. Whether that is a threat they follow though with or not I'm not sure. No way. That would definitely be fraud. Game shows are pretty strictly regulated and they can't just choose to not give you money that you won. I was on one that required like 30 second shot, don't quite remember, of the contestants scrambling around picking up the supplies they want. Turns out we didn't need nearly that long. Been on a few in the UK. Most notably the chase. In all honesty. There's little in the way of secrets. I met my team on the chase that morning in the hotel waiting for the taxi. On one show we were kept apart from our opponents probably to stop colluding about splitting or stealing. Another was just a long wait in the green room waiting for other episodes to film. As other people have said. Clothes are important. No logos. Solid colors. No solid black or white though. Had very little interaction with hosts other than between takes or when they introduce themselves before the show. They have a job to do. So can't just spend time shooting the shitty with you. That being said. Bradley Walsh was really nice. Oh. Re the chase. You and Bradley legitimately have no idea which chaser you will face. Bradley likes the surprise of it apparently. A lot of his bits are ad-libbed. Too. I was a contestant on The Price is Right. They don't choose people at random. They interview everyone in the audience for about 30 seconds earlier in the day and decide who to pick based off that. I was in the audience of polished versions of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. To prevent cheating you have to pass two metal detector gates before entering studio. No phone or other electronic allowed. Everything takes Saru long here. Episode lasts around 30 minutes. But recording at 2-3 hours. There are only 3 episodes recorded every day. Once the big screen behind host back broke and we had to sit for 4 hours until it was repaired. At least we got paid extra. Friend you phone in one of the lifelines is sitting in the same building as studio. Just other room. 
I've also been author a few question for Jeopardy, which is called Varbank here. Pretty badass name. Most of the authors had to be PH. D. Or experienced experts in their field. I was accepted as a student just because they were short on economy and mathematics question. Sadly it was only one time gig. But it was pretty fun seeing contestants trying to find a question for answers I wrote. It also paid pretty nice. 100 zaities, so around $25, for each 5 question from one category which was like 15 minutes of work. For my 19th birthday. We went to a Jerry Springer taping. This was about 12 years ago when it was still in Chicago. It's faker than I thought but far more entertaining than seeing the occasional episode on TV. The guests are smaller time actors trying to get screen time in. One was actually an eloquent British woman but her character was supposed to be a gutter dyke. Not sure that would fly nowadays. Most of what's filmed is never used and you also get tired from non-stop clapping. However. During breaks they show live marionette sx scenes and also give beads to women if they go topless. These are audience members. You're also encouraged to antagonize the actors on stage with one liners. I was part of the paid audience for American Ninja Warrior. I was actually with a vegetarian group that collected the money earned for charity. So that was cool. What wasn't cool was getting downtown at midnight. For there to be hundreds of bats flying around and a 2 hour delay. We were only allowed to wear certain colors. No logos. And yeah they did take the audience cheering booing to edit and later. Which was honestly a good thing because at around 3 am. Most of the audience started leaving. The stands were empty so they had us moving down the course as they filmed to make it look more full haha. I got to meet a couple of the warriors. We all were on TV. And we nabbed a sign from the set. Overall was fun. Not really a game show but I was an audience member with my class for America's funniest videos. They literally had empty plate cups at some tables and a light up sign telling us when to laugh. Sometimes they would even move audience members depending on how well they laugh. Not me but my uncle's friend went on Big Brother this year and was a completely different person. They made him the villain of the show which is completely different to him in real life. I roll he's actually a really nice footy bloke. Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune both film at Sony Pictures. When I interned there. I got to go watch a Jeopardy taping on two separate occasions. During commercial breaks. Alex Trebek walks out into the audience and asks if anyone has any questions for him. He's really funny and I got to ask him a few. My friend that I brought used his one question to this absolute TV icon to ask him if he had ever seen a video called Jeff Puddy where it's basically all the contestants named Jeff. The questions are all Jeff and the answers are all Jeff. Alex just looked confused and said Jeff Puddy? No. I don't think I have. Walked away. One of the Clue Crew people, I can't remember his name, would talk to us a lot and told my friend he saw it. I just like to think that Alex went home that night and remembered my friend's weird question then watched it and thought about him. I attended a taping of Conan several years ago. As soon as the show is finished Conan grabs a mic and roams the aisles while singing. This is the after the show song that nobody knows about or something similar. Definitely a crooner. And I openly swooned because come on. Conan is a dream and a treasure. Not exactly a game show. I saw Conan live only thing I can add to all this talk is when he went to the band. They had some audio issue like 30 seconds into the song. So folks yelled cut. They spent like 5 minutes figuring it out while Conan made a joke about don't worry folks TV magic and those fools at home will never know how unprofessional we are here. Evil laugh. Then he was all. Okay. We're gonna do that intro again. So clap just as much. And pretend that never happened. Cut. And he pretended like he was just coming back from commercial. Not a gamma shell but was in the audience for the Steve Harvey show. Holy crap is he a shallow and fragile individual. We were told we could ask him questions between takes if he was in a good enough mood. Which he would only be in if we reacted well during takes. We also were not allowed to ask him any questions about his teeth or mustache. 
He also said that his lifelong dream was always to just be on television and that's it. Edit. Ro. My top comment is about Steve Harvey and how terrible he is. He's also said shti like women shouldn't date atheists. Men cheat because of women and in response to the question of how can a girl politely turn down romantic advances he said something to the affect of you can't. Once a man is interested we're locked in and there's nothing you can do. How fast they want to get rid of you when it's over. I was on Millionaire and it ends when they shoot everyone gathering around the host. Laughing. Shaking hands etc as if it's the start of an after party. They end the shot and then you have just a few minutes to grab your stuff from the dressing room and get on the bus out of there. I can understand it, their post production work is just beginning. And most of the contestants are about to get a big disappointment hangover. You arrive full of hopes and dreams and then most people will not get into the chair. All will flame out pretty quickly. Some of the contestants were already starting to get cranky. And the production staff have no further use for them. So. If you tape a show but it never airs you won't get the prizes and money you won. Years ago I was on the most renowned. Long running game show in my country sale of the century which aired every weeknight at 7pm nationwide. I got on the show and won fancy golf clubs and $10 K prize money. Safe right? My show was scheduled to air about 2 months later on Wednesday. The 12th of September. 2001. 24 hours earlier all regular programming was suspended. And my show was cancelled but I was saved because another contestant was a carryover champ and for continuity. They had to air it at some point, which they did. Highly irregularly. That following Saturday night. Those terrorists never won out. I was in the audience of a game show and the host didn't interact with us at all. Instead. To keep the audience spirits up they had this guy joke around with the audience between shows, I think it was 5 shows in one day or something. He was funnier than the host. Actually. My dad was on countdown on channel 4, UK broadcaster, back in the days of Richard Whiteley. There is a lot of stuff that gets repeated and recorded multiple times to fix stuff like reflections off glasses. Coughing. Eyes closed. Continuity etc. Also Carol Vorderman wasn't the maths genius she was portrayed as. She did do most of the numbers game calculations. But for the really hard ones where neither contestant can get the exact answer. It wasn't Carol who worked it out. It was a Scottish guy called Michael Wiley. He'd spend ages scribbling away while the rest of the show was being recorded and when he eventually worked it out. The calculations would be passed back to Carol who would record her bit which was then edited into the show to make it look like she had worked it out in real time. Edit. Everything looks wire AII cheaper in person. Like most stuff is made of plywood. Commercial breaks usually include a weird stage manager telling you to do something different or the audience to get more involved. Those were as a contestant. Working on those shows is a whole other story. I nearly murdered the director of Mr. Kef because we spent 12 hours setting up the sets. Then he wanted everything to shift over about a foot. Luckily the union stepped in and said nope. I was on Slime Time Live because my family visited Universal Studios Florida. Including the old school Nickelodeon Studios building. They gave my sister and I an entire change of clothes. Including boxer shorts, I'm a girl too and water shows. Our team was eliminated the first round so they took us back to get dressed in our regular clothes. Then we got to sit in the audience for the rest of the show. My family took two weeks off of school in order to make that Florida trip. I realized that Slime Time Live only filmed on weekdays. And not during summer. So 12 year old me came to the conclusion that you had to be playing hooky in order to get on the show. Robot Wars. You're waiting about half an hour between each battle they will film either a heat or all the finals in a single day. If you were lucky, like I was, you'd see all the most popular robots fighting it out in the finals. The bit where the lights go out and all focus is on the arena. After the big scary voice says Robotairs. Stand by. There is a pause that could be anything from 10 to 30 seconds in which the entire building is silent. You can hear a pin drop. 
then you get the countdown and I shit you not this is one of the coolest. Most intense things I've ever sat through.